parenting order is a document detailing the parenting arrangements of a child or children. When one of these orders is put into place, it's important that parents know what's involved. So tell me, what are the different types of parenting orders? So essentially there's two different types of parenting orders. You can have parenting orders that are made by consent where two parents or sometimes if there's grandparents involved um, will agree to the orders that are made and they are then sealed by the court. So they are filed in the court and the registrar of the court reviews them and considers them to be in the best interest of the children and makes them as formal court orders that are just as good as if a judge in a courtroom had made them. The other type of parenting orders is if um, there's an unfortunate circumstance where parents um, or other people significant to a child or children can't agree mm. and one person has to apply or, or does apply to the court and asks for the judge to make orders in relation to those arrangements. So which is the best option then? Consent orders. Yeah, so the ones where the two parents get on the same page and they agree. And Absolutely. They the court. Um, and, and another big thing is that they can then control the outcome. I mean, the parents know the children better than anyone and for them to have the final decision about what arrangements are in place for them is the best outcome for everyone. Mm. So what are you know the different types of orders that people put into their parenting orders? Like what sort of arrangements do they put in there? Um, so generally the orders um, detail whether one parent will have what we call sole parental responsibility mm -hmm. or whether both parents will have shared parental responsibility and that relates to decision making for the children, the, the big decisions like education and health and religion and those sorts of things. Um, of course there would be the living arrangements, so who the children live with or whether they live with both parents equally or if they live with one and spend time with the other and how that works and this, the particular dates and times and, and how they move between households, Who if that is the Christmas case. And, yeah. Special occasions, of course, are included in there. Um, school holidays, um, where changeover happens. Uh, we can also include and often include a lot of other standard things, for example, um, in relation to parents keeping each other updated about their contact details so that when the children are with them, the other parent knows how to contact the children if something happens. Um, uh, for parents to both have authority to get school reports and doctor's records and that sort of thing without having to necessarily go through the other parent and yeah. um, and, and go the, the long way they can you know, have that information to hand. It's difficult, isn't it, um, when people separate, depending on how well they separate as to the communication lines. That's right. Um, and, you know, with some in some circumstances, the better option is to put in as much detail as possible about those sorts of things, because if the parents are finding it difficult to communicate, they then have these guidelines that set it out for them. A lot of parents will agree to those sorts of things and um, put the agreement in the drawer and never have to refer to it because mm. they can work together about those things. But they have that safeguard there that if things don't go well they can refer to those guidelines. So what you know happens then if people aren't following those? What, what's well the steps? Um, if it's a consent order or a court order there can be repercussions so if one parent doesn't comply with something in the agreement or order then um, in, the, in the consent order or court order then the other parent can make an application what we call an application for contravention which is where they go before the judge and say this was our parenting order, the other person didn't comply with it, this is what I want you to do in the circumstances. And so the, the typical example with that circumstance is if one parent is supposed to have time and the other parent doesn't hand the children over and the parent misses out on that time, they might be asking the judge for what we call make-up time. Mm. Um, thankfully, contravention applications are not too common yeah. um, and we often find them less common in circumstances where the parents have initially reached an agreement because it's something that they've both put agreed thought into, to. have control over and have agreed to. So it's it's more common that they comply with it. Mm. So, you know, what are some common misconceptions then about parenting orders and consent orders? Oh, where to start? Yes. <laughs> um, a lot of people um, have a misconception that if they um, have parenting orders in place or if they go and see a lawyer, it means that they can't communicate or that things um, must be hairy or, or they, mm. you know, there has to be some animosity between them. It's not the case at all. I mean, we see all sorts of different circumstances, of course, as, as you can imagine, every family is different. Um, we see some circumstances where um, you know, the parents move between the household and the children mm. stay in the house yes. and their, their communication is um, exceptional, um, but they still do consent orders because um, it's a no-brainer really, mm. um, because you have those guidelines 
um, you have the arrangements in paper and a binding order um, and you don't have any concerns then if things do go pear-shaped in the future because you just don't know what, ha what might happen. Yeah, because people repartner and things like that. That's right. So it's always that's a good right. idea to get, because a lot of people don't get them, do they? Like, because they that's think it's all right. amicable at one point, but yeah. then it can turn. Yes, exactly right. Um, another common misconception is people think that if they have this arrangement in place, that it has to be um, stuck to religiously. So, mm. for example, um, you know, a consent order might say, um, that the children spend time with mum on Mother's Day for the whole day. Of course, that's common sense, something that parents should implement anyway. Mm. But that's something that's put in the orders. Um, now, if mum says to dad, oh, look, I'd really like to take the kids away for the weekend. Um, can I have them for the whole of the weekend? And we can work something out for the next weekend. You can have them that weekend instead. Dad says, no worries. That can happen. Even though the orders say something different, the parents can still agree and be flexible mm. about things because life happens and it should be about the kids. Yes, and what's best for them. Because mm. some parents do forget that. Mm. So some parents have concerns, oh, you know, I don't want to be stuck to these rigid arrangements and we explain, explain to them, well, you don't have to be. You guys can always agree to something different because usually the um, orders are worded that the children spend time with each parent as agreed and failing agreement, this is what happens. Yes. So only if they have um, difficulties and they have that to refer to if things if things go working. wrong. Of course, there's a, an exception to that, um, you know, say that the orders say for the children to live with both parents equally and then that doesn't happen. One parent relocates to Sydney, for example, um, then the orders may be considered frustrated, but certainly with little bits and pieces, it can be flexible. So if you are after expert advice to help make your separation go as smoothly as it can, uh, speak to the team at Rural Family Law Centre today.